Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the online session, our first session for pathology laboratory. So in addition to looking at the slides for this session, I'm also going to give you a tutorial on how to use the iLearn at DMSFI virtual microscopy. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to minimize myself on the right upper corner because I'm not going to be using myself okay, in this particular uh, case. Okay, so we are, uh, we look into this box, the virtual microscopy box, you open it up and then you open the medicine slide box pathology slide box and then we have the cellular adaptation here so open it up and we have four slides for viewing so in cellular adaptation we have four four types of adaptations to cellular growth what are they we have hypertrophy hyperplasia we have metaplasia and atrophy okay so we are going to discuss only hypertrophy and hyperplasia for this session so i'm going to open the mycardial hypertrophy okay so i'm going to change on the share okay ah sorry uh slide view okay so uh in so we do not see any uh, microscopic section you open up this Adobe flash player and then you uh, allow it to play so that we can see the micro sections or if you do not have that Adobe flash player you press this not secure uh, button you have this flash player here and place it on the allow portion okay so i'm not going to uh, do that because it might do something uh, let's try to reload okay oh okay so that's that what that is what will happen okay so we have the myocardial hypertrophy um hypertrophy is associated with an increase in the size of the organ. The same with the, with the hyperplasia. But in hypertrophy, it is associated with an increase in what? In the size of the cell. So uh, what is the reason for its increase? It's usually associated with an increase in the components or the structural proteins or, or, or structural components present within the cell. So it can be physiologic, it can also be pathologic. So, like in this case, in myocardial hypertrophy, what happens is that there should be an etiology. Okay, so the etiology will cause the mechanical sensors to be activated. It will cause the activation of growth factors and uh, mediators that will lead to opening up or the activation of the biochemical pathways. We have two biochemical pathways, by the way, with regards to hypertrophy, what are they? We have, first one is PI3K, AKT signaling pathway, and the other one would be the G-protein coupled uh, receptor pathway. So the PI3K, AKT signaling pathway is favored by the physiologic type of hypertrophy, while the G protein coupled receptor pathway is favored by the pathologic pathway. Okay, so when those pathways are activated, it will lead to the activation of transcription factors like GATA4, NFAT, and MEF2, which will lead to an increase in the synthesis of proteins. Okay, so that will lead to hypertrophy. So let's look into the slide, you zoom, Okay, the, the slide, and voila, you magnify them. So this is a cardiac myocyte. What we need to identify would be for the presence of, of enlarged myocytes. Okay, so actually these are all enlarged myocytes. Uh, this is identified with an increase in the thickness 
of the my, of the myocyte or the muscle fiber as well as in an increase in the size of the nuclei okay so those are the features that will help us identify hypertrophy in the in the cardiac muscle okay so uh, as what i have said a while ago it can be physiologic or pathologic if it's physiologic it's attributed to what increase in the workload and when you have an increase in the workload it can be seen with athletes so when they are regularly exercising okay uh, not just stretching but performing weights and that's when muscle hypertrophy occurs on the other hand if the cause for the hypertrophy would not be uh, uh, not be exercising but presence of hypertension the presence of faulty valves then most probably it's pathology okay so we go to the other slide i'm going to close this one okay i'm sorry so share screen again okay so we are going with the benign prostatic hyperplasia and again i'm going to share screen just to make sure okay that I am sharing this one. Okay, so so benign prostatic hyperplasia, or sorry, let's start with the hyperplasia. In hyperplasia, it's different from hypertrophy in a sense that hyperplasia would be associated with an increase in the number of cells. So that will cause the enlargement of the organ. So grossly, hypertrophy and hyperplasia would be the same because both conditions will lead to an enlargement of the organ okay but when we look in the high microscopic sanctions we would know that ah this one is hypertrophy because this is not actively dividing and in hyperplasia we have cells that are actively dividing okay so uh, it can also be physiologic or and and pathologic or pathologic so physiologic it's because of the uh the need for increasing its functional capacity like in the breast or in the uterus during pregnancy wherein there's a, a need to increase its functional capacity the hormones appropriately will uh will energize those cells and it will lead to hyperplasia on the other hand if it's a pathologic cause like in the case of this slide benign prostatic hyperplasia this is attributed to excessive or inappropriate action of the hormones what are they testosterone dihydroxytestosterone these hormones would lead to enlargement of the prostate gland okay and that's not physiologic that's pathologic so we zoom in on the slide you remember the different parts of the prostate okay so we have the uh, stroma which is fibromuscular and then we have the glands or the assigner assigner structures so in normal conditions this would be the appearance of the prostatic assignus wherein they are uh, they appear to be tubular and they are lined by single layer of simple columnar cells in the presence of hyperplasia like this one the, the glands or the assigner structures tend to be larger and there would be overcrowding of the cells notice that there's projection into the lumen there's stratification of the nuclei okay these are changes that would be attributed to hyperplasia okay so aside from hyperplasia the the benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia would also manifest with hypertrophy okay because of this fibromuscular stroma okay because they they do not increase in numbers okay they increase in their size okay so uh we have those two slides so i hope that you have learned from this session i'm going to meet you again next meeting and we're going to uh, touch on metaplasia and atrophy okay so uh, thank you for 
uh, watching and good